If this year has taught us anything, it's that disconnecting from the world can be both a good thing and a bad thing. Many work from home and therefore need to be connected to technology. Not everyone's idea of a vacation, but it's definitely a way to disconnect from the world. Imagine spending a weekend, a week or even two weeks, living off the land the way Native Americans or early settlers did. Some Central Illinoisans did it for fun. And here's PM Magazine's Suzanne Kay from The Vault 1982. If you're looking for a way to escape from the everyday 9 to 5 grind, then out in the country may be just the place for you with this group of buckskinners. But you have to be ready to give up all the comforts of civilization. This is a rendezvous and a chance for these city folks to get back to nature early American style. Now, if you were to come upon a rendezvous, you'd find a group of people spending their weekends the way the pioneers did. The unofficial leader of this group near Danville is Jim Lizard Bryan. A rendezvous is a, was a gathering of mountain men in, from 1700 to about 1840. They met one time a year in the mountains or wherever they was at to bring all their furs into trade, to buy new equipment, traps and such forth, and to have a good time, just a, a real blowout. The group is not only interested in reliving history, but members also enjoy researching the period. Mel Mueller has been a buckskinner one and a half years. I wasn't the least bit interested in history when I was in high school. I got into this and I started reading books, you know, and now I'm into it and I can appreciate what those people did 200 years ago for this country, let alone every minute of it. This is not a chauvinistic endeavor. Wives and children are more than welcome. Dale is married to Lizard, and their wedding was authentic buckskinner. It's a way to get rid, of, get out of uh, the world for a while, stepping back like 200 years, releasing tensions. Uh, I enjoy shooting. I have my own rifle, and a lot of the women are either waiting for theirs to be built, or well, a lot of them aren't interested in shooting. Uh, I saw that particular rifle hanging in a shop and my husband said well if I bought what you gonna learn to shoot it <laughs> that you can come out and just enjoy it and have fun and you don't have to go with your with your mother saying do this and do that <laughs> you know? that's Brian Stewart and he's been rendezvousing with his parents almost a year now you won't see any modern day camping gear here these buckskinners pride themselves on keeping their camp authentic Try to be as authentic as we can, say 90%. We allow uh, shooting glasses for safety's sake and uh, sleeping bags, which we cover with uh, skins and everything. As far as the guns, the outfits, and everything like that, we're pretty authentic. Now, the first step for any buckskinner is dressing properly. There are no blue jeans out here. Instead, the folks wear the clothes similar to those worn by the pioneers during the early 1800s. So that means lots of cottons and leathers. Now, all the clothes are authentic and made by hand. Many of the men make their own leather pants, and the women make the dresses. I made the pants, uh, the shirt that uh, a friend of mine made this for me. I made this back during when we had a couple of real bad winters. and didn't have a lot of things to do, and uh, just sat down and just went to work on it. They, uh, a lot of people wonder how hot these pants would be. They aren't hot at all. They breathe a lot better than even Levi's do, um, because uh, it just like to be on the animal. Tents are as unlikely to appear at this gathering as blue jeans. Instead, lean-tos and teepees, also called lodges, are the order of the day. And when it comes time to raise these temporary homes, everyone is there to help. The camaraderie amongst the members of this group is infectious, and there's a great deal of trust, something today's buckskinners say can be traced back to the original buckskinners. You can't meet a nicer group of people. You can go from coast to coast, traveling all year, all over. You meet them people, they treat you like they've known you all their life. We can take a $2,000 gun and leave it outside overnight and wake up in the morning and it'll be there. That gun Lizard is talking about is a flintlock, the only gun Buck Skinners use. But not all run as high as $2,000. Some, like this mountain poor boy rifle, cost about $350. 
All right, on the flintlock rifle, it came in the time period of the way we try to stay in the dress from the 1740s to the 1860s. Up along about to the 1840s when the cap lock started coming in, and that's more of a, a more modern type of shooting. Oh, it's a lot more fun. It's a, a lot more challenging than shooting the more modern type of guns. One of the highlights this weekend is a shootout between two teams. Both aim at a board several yards away. The first to crack the board wins. The losers, well, they literally get egg in their face. After eating eggs, it's time for cooking solid foods, pioneer style, over an open fire. Then it's time to retire to a community fire, where the entertainment is on the house. We're just like one big happy family. Just get together and have a good time, shoot, party a little bit, and eat, eat good food, and just get back to nature, really. If you ever wonder what we did before the internet, there's your answer. <laughs> Another Buck Skinner fun fact. They claim the hides they wear last longer than, than denim jeans. What? I'm not going to try oh it. Oh, my word. Each Sunday morning at 9 a.m., you can catch more stories just like this on WCIX. Oh, so fun.